How's it going everyone? In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about audio post-production. So right now I've got the AC going in the room. You can hear some early reflections. You can hear a little bit of reverb. And I want to show how you can go from a mix that sounds like this to something that sounds like this. So we're still on the exact same take. The microphone is in the exact same place. Let me take you through my audio post-production workflow, my mixing, the plugins I use, and maybe some alternate plugins that you could use for your work. Let's get into it. Welcome to my editing bay. So for the purpose of this video, I will be working within Pro Tools. I just happen to be very comfortable on the software, but you can accomplish very similar results within DaVinci as well. So first things first, I start with a compressor. The compressor I use is called the Oxford Dynamics Compressor by Sonox. It's a very clean compressor that I purchased a few years back when I used to do a lot of classical music mixing. That being said, you can accomplish very similar results using the stock plugin in DaVinci. What I do here is I bring the threshold down. Usually I record it around here. Let's see what the recording actually sounds like. How's it going everyone? In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about audio post-production. So right now I've got the AC going in the room. You can hear some. So what the threshold does is it shows at which point the compressor is going to start acting. So if I set it to negative 22 dB more or less, I'm gonna make the threshold a little bit higher. So if you look at what it's doing here, you can see that at the threshold of negative 22, when it's louder than that, it's going to bring the volume down. So a compressor, what it does is it makes the loudest parts of your dialogue and the quietest parts of your dialogue all more cohesive so that when you're listening back to something, it's not all over the place, right? You want the audio to sort of be audible, whether it's a whisper or whether you're shouting. It should There should still be some dynamic range, but it should all be a little bit tighter. So that's the first step is I'm decreasing the dynamic range. Early reflections, you can hear a little bit of reverb. So I'm gonna lower the threshold just a bit more to get more of my dialogue. I feel like I'm only getting really the loudest parts. I want to get a little bit more than that. And then the next step is I want it all to be louder. So if we were to compare this to something that's already on YouTube, that's already mixed and delivered. All right, so I was wrong about the Z Flip 5. It's a lot louder, right? I want my audio to be more or less at the same level because if it's too quiet, then people are probably not gonna be pay attention. They might skip to the next video. Just think of ads when you're watching TV. An ad will pop up and it'll like, pew, it'll grab your attention, right? Because it's so loud. I don't want that because people would probably get pissed off, but we do want it to be loud enough so that people don't look away. But what I do here, you can use a meter. Honestly, I love using references for everything. References for photography, for video, and for audio as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play this. Kinda. It's like, kinda. So we're still on the exact same take. The microphone is in the exact same place. All right, so this is the new Z Flip Let me take you through my audio from Samsung. This workflow, is their smaller mixing, folding the phone again, I starting at a thousand bucks, maybe some and in nearly the same dimensions your work. as Let's last get year's. Boom, that's pretty much what I do, keeping it simple. That sounds great, it sounds nice and loud, which is what we want, but of course, all of that noise, all of that AC came up when I pushed the gain. So we wanna get rid of that, it doesn't sound very professional. So the plugin I use for that is called RX10 Voice Denoise. Now this is a plugin by Isotope, it's not cheap, but at the end of this video, I will go through a bunch of plugin alternatives. So the way this plugin works is it needs to analyze just the noise so that it can then remove the noise from the signal. Uh, so this part over here looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and click learn and let it do its magic. Boom, it's that easy. So let's go without it first. How's it going everyone? In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about audio post-production, so. And now with the denoising. Right now, I've got the AC going in the room. You can hear some early reflections. You can hear a little bit of re- So usually I would click gentle, but to be honest, I usually don't leave the AC on when I'm recording. So I'm gonna go for something a little bit more intense this time around, and I'm gonna reduce it even more. We might start getting artifacts, but to be honest, if you're not paying attention, you might not notice these. Next thing I like to use, once again, in the noise reduction world, is the D reverb. Now, I don't know how well this is gonna work for this video because of all that AC, but let's try it out and see what happens. A little bit of reverb, and I want to show how you can go from a mix that sounds like this. Okay, so obviously that sounds uh, way too robotic, but I think we can start from that and actually get something pretty decent. So. 
let's actually let's go back to the beginning reduction let's reduce it less artifact smoothing so the more i do this the less artifacts of those at max so i guess it and as far as the tail length goes it's pretty short in here let's do something like that so right now i've got the ac let's do less reduction because it sounds too fake going in the room you can hear some early reflections you can hear a little bit of reverb and i want to show how you can go from a mix that sounds like like this to something that sounds like let's go even less this so we're still on the exact same take the microphone is in the exact same place okay that sounds pretty good now i'm going to the next thing on my chain is i like to do some eqing because of course all of this has changed uh, the way that everything sounds and so I want to sort of bring back the way that my voice sounds as far as this is concerned I use the fab filter pro q2 uh, some pretty basic things I start with is I will cut the low frequencies because the human voice only really starts at a certain place and if I ever have some plosives you know which is more common with this microphone then I can go ahead and get rid of those right from the bat so something along the lines of that as far as my voice is concerned I know that my lower frequency tends to sit at around like 160 if I remember something like that so I like to bring that back up especially since I'm cutting the low end and then depending on what's going on the high frequencies I may remove or enhance this a little bit. So let's see what's going on. How's it going, everyone? In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about audio post-production. So right now I've got the AC going in the room. You can hear some early reflections. You can hear a little bit of reverb. And I want to show how you can go from a mix that sounds like this to something that sounds like this. So we're still on the exact same take. The microphone is in the exact same place. Let me take you through my audio post-production workflow, my mixing, the plugins I use, and maybe some alternate plugins that you could use for your work. So I'm gonna go with something like this as far as the EQ curve is concerned. I just found that my voice was a little bit present. Those S's were a little bit intense around the 3K range. And I brought back my lower vocal formant just to, you know, have it sound a little bit, a little bit more weight to the voice. Now, I did wanna bring some upper now, I did want to bring some higher frequencies, but I realized that I, I was getting a lot of sibilance. So that would be the next step in the chain for me is to add, once again, this is under Dynamics, a suppressor. So, so this is another plugin by the company Sonox. And essentially what it does is it removes those harsh S sounds. The s -s -s -s. So let's see what that sounds like. How's it going, everyone? In today's video, I'm going to be talking about audio post-production. So right now I've got the AC going. the plugins I use and maybe some alternate plugins that you could use for your work. Let's get into it. How's it going everyone? In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about audio post-production. So right now I've got the AC going in the room. You can hear some early reflections. You can hear a little bit of reverb and I want to show so this just takes away that harshness whenever an S or a T or like there are certain sounds that we make that are a little bit harsh. I usually do like to watch these videos on my TV as well because I find that, you know, my TV, I don't have like a nice set of speakers and so it really emphasizes the bad sounds. So I found this frequency range, I lowered it by a few dB, which essentially what happens is whenever like a strong S sound comes in, it will lower just that frequency band, which is, where I've selected it to be like the harsh frequency band. I selected this frequency range and it'll drop by a few dB. Essentially what happens is whenever there's a strong S sound, you can see that it reduces the volume. So how you can go from a mix that sounds like this to something that sounds like this. So we're still on the exact same. And so if there is no S sound, it won't do anything. So it'll sound totally normal. And as soon as there's like a strong S, then it will lower it so that it's not as harsh. So the very last part of my chain is a limiter. Now, a limiter is essentially a very intense compressor. So if I, uh, if I click limiter over here and I bring the threshold down, you can see that, that it's just like a flat line, right? 
So what that does is it's saying once the audio reaches a threshold of negative one, if, if there's something that surpasses that, just remove it altogether. What I don't want to happen is that I export this, I add it to my video, I put it on YouTube, and then it just distorts people's speakers because it's surpassing the maximum level that it should be. Instead of that, we can use a limiter, which will just lower the volume to negative one as a theoretical maximum. Okay, so before we wrap this up, let's talk other plugins. So as far as noise reduction is concerned, Isotope are the best. The suite that I use isn't cheap, but they do have something called RX Elements, which is much more affordable at $129. I know that's not cheap either, but they do go on sale every now and then. I remember purchasing this a few years back for about $29.99, so just keep an eye open, you can find a good price. Another company that has great audio plugins that are free is called Hofa. So you can go to hofa-plugins.de, it's a German company, and go to freeware. You'll have to download their Hofa plugins manager, but they do have some free and then some very affordable plugins. So if we look at the Hofa system plugin bundle free, we can see that it comes with some mixing, mastering, dynamics, EQ, reverbs, anyways, a bunch of super useful stuff. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed this content, I'm gonna drop a video over here that might interest you according to the YouTube algorithm. If you did make it this far into the video, a like and subscribe would go a super long way in supporting this channel. Thank you very much, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.